Hey everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to crochet the super simple face washcloth. It's round, it measures about four inches across, not counting the little pico stitches, and it's all stitched in single crochet, except of course the pico or peacot, however you want to pronounce that, stitches. I love these. You can put your makeup on and off with them and you can wash your face with them. And they're neat to have around and then when you're done, toss them in the laundry with your towels and they come out nice and clean. Now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make the round face wash cloths, you're going to need, of course, some cotton or some people prefer a cotton blend. I'm going to be using this Crafter Secret cotton. It's from Hobby Lobby and you can get four and sometimes almost five of these wash cloths with one of these skeins of yarn. It has two ounces on it and so I always say you can get four off one, but sometimes I'll get almost a fifth one as well. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. That's a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle to weave in your ends, and of course you'll need a pair of scissors. I forgot to tell you that the name of the yarn, the colorway, is called Pinkalicious, and again that's by Crafter's Secret. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain three chains. One, two, and three. All right, now we're going to place eight single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we'll go in that second chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. So there's one, two, three, four, five, move that tail out of the way, whoops, <laughs> there we go, seven and that tail's having a little bit of trouble there. All right, eight. Let's make sure I crocheted the right amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to join to my first single crochet with a slip stitch. So I'll pull that loop through, pull that loop through the loop on my hook, and chain one. The chain one on each row will not count as a stitch. It's merely just a chain to get us back up where we need to be. So we have eight single crochets for row one. Now you'll notice that you'll have a hole in the middle. When we finish, we'll come back in and close that hole up. And so for row one, you should have eight single crochets. For row two, we're going to be placing two single crochets in each of the eight single crochets. So we'll go right in that next single crochet and stitch two. One and two. Then we'll stitch two in each of the remaining seven. four, six, eight, ten, twelve, Fourteen and the last two, fifteen and sixteen single crochets. Again, we're going to join to our first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. So now for row two, we have sixteen single crochets. Row three, we're going to be doing what I call one and two. We're going to place one single crochet in the next 
and two single crochets in the next one and two. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and the last one we'll place two, which will be 23 and 24. We'll join to our first single crochet again with a slip stitch and chain one. So for row three, we have 24. For row four, we're going to be doing two and two. And what that is, is one single crochet in the next two single crochets and then two single crochets in the next. One and two. One single crochet in the next two, and two single crochets in the next. One and two. One, two, and then one and two. And so we'll continue to repeat this around stitching one single crochet in the next two and two single crochets in the next, working all the way around and join back to our first single crochet. I completed Row four, stitching one single crochet in the next two and two in the next, and you should have a total of 32 single crochets for row four. Now for row five, we're going to do similar, only we're going to do one single crochet in the next three. So one, two, three, and then we do two single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, three, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. I call that doing three and two. It's not a technical term. It just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. One single crochet in the next three. So there's one, two, three, and then two single crochets in the next. And again, we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to our first single crochet. I have completed row five, stitching one, two, three, one in each of the next three, and then two single crochets together. Now, for row six, we're going to do one, two, three, four. One single crochet in the next four, and then two single crochets together. So we're doing four and two. One, two, three, four, and then two single crochets together. One and two. And again, we're going to repeat this all the way around and join back to our first single crochet. So one single crochet in the next four. One, 
two, three, four, and two single crochets in the next, working all the way around. And again, join back to our first single crochet and chain one. I have completed row six, and you should have 48 single crochets for row six. Now we're finished with those rows, and we're going to finish with the peacock trim or the pico trim. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next three. So one, two, three. The next one we're going to single crochet, chain three, and then we're going to slip stitch going through those two loops on that single crochet. And then we'll go to the next stitch and stitch one, two, three. So the way the Pico row works is we'll stitch one single crochet in the next three, then we'll single crochet, chain three, and slip stitch in the top of that single crochet. We'll single crochet in the next three, then we'll single crochet in the next, and chain three, one, two, three, then slip stitch in the top of that single crochet, and then we'll go right to the next stitch and stitch one single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. And it makes these fun little bumps on the edge. All right, so there's my three single crochets. I'm going to single crochet in the next. I'm going to chain three, slip stitch in that single crochet, and I like to go through both loops of the single crochet. So we're slip stitching and then we'll go right to the next stitch and stitch one single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Then the next single crochet will single crochet, chain three. Whoops. There we go. Slip stitch in the top of that single crochet. and then repeat. And we'll continue to repeat this, working all the way around, and join back to that first single crochet. I've completed my three single crochets, then single crochet, pico stitch, all the way around. Here's my last pico stitch here, and I'm going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then I'll pull that loop to the back so it looks nice and neat. And then, of course, we'll weave that in. Now, you should have 12 pico stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right. Now, there's two things we need to do. We're going to turn it over. And the first thing we need to do is close up this hole in the center. Sometimes I've gotten a really big hole. And sometimes I haven't. It just depends on what I'm in the mood about that day and if I'm pulling my yarn a little tighter than others. It's not a mistake if you have a hole, but we do want to close it up so that the washcloth looks nice and neat. And if you leave the hole, it's not going to hurt anything either. The washcloth's still going to work great. All right, so what we need to do is we're going to thread that tail of yarn on our needle. Then we're going to go around those first stitches from row one. 
and just go through with our needle. And as we go, we'll just gently pull on that. We'll work all the way around. And the thing is, you're going to have to weave this in anyway. So now you're killing two birds with one stone, as they say, because we're closing up the hole and weaving in our tail of yarn. And as you go, just gently pull on that until the hole's closed. Now, I mean, you may still get a tiny hole. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so I'm going to go around a little bit more just to make sure I passed where I started. And then I'm going to go up and go back the way I came, making sure that's nice and snug and just continue to go back and forth using up that yarn and make sure you go through some of the fibers of the yarn and not just the stitches. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut that off. Whoops. All right, and then the other thing we need to do, of course, is to weave this end in. When it comes to cotton, I like to kind of flatten out the tail of it. I think it makes it easier to get on the needle. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to weave this in so that it won't come out. So I'm going to go in towards the center of my washcloth. There we go. Pull that too tight. And then I like to go through some stitches going one way, then the other, just making sure that's going to stay put. There we go. And you can weave that back and forth until you're comfortable that that's not going to come undone. All right, so there is our face washcloth. And now I have a set of four that I can keep for myself or give as a gift. Mm -hmm.